that to present him here, Mr. Tom Wright. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I, I think I've met some of you. I don't know. Have anybody seen this presentation before or not? Uh, were you guys, just so I have an, an understanding of who I'm presenting to, because I, I do this presentation for a lot of different audiences. What do you, are you guys crop production specialists? Are you like, I, I, I know Dixon Marketing. What, what do you guys do in general? Is this there... is, a, Tom, just short stroke. Got some marketing people. Okay. Got some engineers in here. Okay. Um, we got a, a mix of people in the field. Uh, some are from uh, one of the sister companies that Case IH has bought. Um, so it's a great mix, but they're, none of okay. them are dealers people or field people. Okay, okay. All right, because most of the time this presentation is shown to dealer parts people and dealer whole goods people. So that's so it's slanted slightly for that. So, but it, I think it'll give you an idea of what your customers, what we're trying to present to the customer group. Uh, that's the purpose of this. So, like Ivan said, my name's Tom Reith. I, I manage all the CNH business for our company. Um, we're the exclusive supplier for Earth Metal. How many people, raise your hand if you've heard of Earth Metal before? Okay, just about everybody, and that's, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's right. You, you warmed them up for me. You did a good job, Ivan. Thank you. But I think uh, when I go out and do this presentation, uh, the alarming fact is, unfortunately, most people don't raise their hands. Okay, so th that's that's my goal really is to educate and make people aware of earth metal, the advantages, you know, against the competition and why our product is unique and why this brand, this exclusive, br this is a CNH brand, why it's so important for you guys to get out there and understand it and be able to talk to your customers about it because it really is unique. It's a valuable product brand that you guys have. So by the end of this presentation, that's the goal. I want you to be able to be able to go out and carry the earth metal flag and go out and be able to talk about it. Um, but before we do that, what I'm going to do is show you a little plant video. So you guys, if you're ever in Canada, if anybody's going to the, there's a, a Canadian farm show uh, in Woodstock, Ontario, if you're coming to that, please come to our factory. You're always welcome at the factory at any time. So a little history, I think, uh, between uh, our company and uh, your company. Uh, there's a lot of us, I mean, there's a lot of people that work for Ingersoll, now Agri Solutions, that are international harvester employees. We're, we're losing a few every year. Uh, they're getting older and older. So our two companies really are tied. Um, it, at one point, we were, you, we were the only, you guys, uh, International, uh, International Harvester, was our only customer. Um, and then things changed. But going back, way, way back, I mean, here's a picture from 1902. This is kind of what, if you came to Hamilton, this would be the International Harvester factory right here. At one point, there was uh, 12,000 people working here. And that's why it was known as Harvester City. So our little building... Well, we're the last remaining building from this huge complex is right about here. The rest of this, uh, the entire port has been redeveloped. U.S. Steel is over here, so we buy steel. It's just off the picture. Uh, we have three other steel plants still in Hamilton right around our factory. So Hamilton was the port. They were known, I mean, this is before, you know, obviously before uh, Goodfield was around, all of these products were made in Hamilton. So that's kind of the, how the history is tied between Goodfield and uh, where we're at today. So there's a lot of history in all the different products that were built through here, but for us, it's important since 2000, that's when CNH basically sold, um, sold, Inger, sold the plant to Ingersoll Company. Uh, so we've been independent since 2000, but in the same factory that, you, that your products are being made now, is the same factory that's been making earth metal blades for 40 years. So it's a strong connection. You know, we really appreciate that connection because we're partners. We really are. Um, when we bought the company in 2000, uh, you know, we had, a, we had to have a good understanding of what our customers wanted, right? You don't go into the field and talk to your customers and, 
you know, not having a good understanding of what their expectations are, right? I mean, that's part of the reason you're here with Ivan is to learn all of that. Well, we had to do the same thing when we, when we kind of spun off from CNH and we do this on a regular basis. We talk to our customers, right? So we ask them, you know, and some of these numbers change a little bit, but most of the time it's pretty consistent. We've, we've asked them, you know, what are, the, what, are, what are you looking for in your wear parts? So when we're making parts, what do you want? Uh, the number one item, 9.17 out of 10, is quality. Customers want the best quality parts that they can get. Followed by wear life, performance, availability, and then down the road is purchase price. You know, it's important, but it's not the most important thing. So if you, were, if you guys were looking at this list, right, and you were going to kind of equate like maybe one phrase or one, one word that would describe all of this, what would it be? Any ideas? That's a good word. Value is the word that I kind of look at. I mean, consistency is another good word. To me, it's value, right? Customers are looking for the best value. So when you're talking to them about the 875 or you're talking to them about the 335, the blades are touching the ground. You have to understand that story, right, to sell the rest of the machine because they're connected. Obviously, it's the part that connects to the ground. So from our vantage point, the value is what we have to build our products to and what your expectation is every time. So that's the other part of this presentation is going to reinforce the quality and the value that we give our customers through earth metal. So to me, I mean, some, some of this presentation is guided towards parts, but th this is an important thing because there's a lot of people going to Shoop and going to other people buying their replacement parts and you don't know what you're getting. And it, it, to us, the value far exceeds the risk of taking a chance. And I can tell you firsthand, because part of the, the AgriSolutions family, we have plants in India, we have plants in Spain, we have our plant in, um, in Hamilton, another plant in Brazil. And if you go to our plant in, for example, uh, India, they never know what steel is going to come that day. They have no idea. They, have, they don't know what they're getting that day when the steel arrives, but they're making disc blades from it. And those blades are being sent into this market. Same thing with Brazil. I mean, the, the automation, you don't see the automation at our plant that, in, in any other plant in North America or the rest of the world. So you know, we're going to talk about why that's important here. So this is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover the material, what we're doing from a reliability standpoint, improvements, spend a little time on the products, and then to me, I'm going to spend time on the parts program because uh, I'm going to get into it when we get to that point. It's important to make sure your dealers participate in the programs, okay? They have to in order to make sure that that parts business comes back to them. And we're going to talk more about that in the presentation. So what is it? Where does it come from? I mean, it's your logo. It came from International Harvester, okay? So it's a CNH product. It's marked on every one of the blades that we make for you. You'll see the earth metal stamp. So what is it? It's, it's not just the steel. It's not just here's, an, here's a piece of metal. It's really a combination of all three of these things. So we're going to talk about these in detail. You kind of already saw the automation and the robotics, right? And what, we're going to explain why that's important. Uh, the metallurgical process, you're going to have a good understanding of what happens to the material when it changes. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the material because the material is also unique. So what happens when we get all three of these things together every single time is earth metal. So a little history from a history perspective. We actually, internally, we have two different earth metals, okay? So from a discussion standpoint, I'm going to talk about Earth Metal 1 and then Earth Metal 2. Earth Metal 2 is the current product. So historically, going back, Earth Metal 1, this is now 40 years plus, Earth Metal 1 was a patented 1085 high carbon steel. And what they did, this was a game changer for International Harvester 
at this point. They figured out a way to encapsulate the sulfur in the steel. Okay, So when they encapsulated that sulfur in the grain of the steel, they, they really made the, made the blade less prone to cracking and all of those issues. So at this point, this was a patented process. It was way ahead of its time. But what happens to patented processes? They become public. They become public, right. So 20 years after earth metal initially was launched, right, this process, uh, it's called Oz tempering, basically encapsulating the sulfur, became open to, to, the, to the rest of our competitors. So earth metal one was, was way ahead of its time. And if, if you looked at our plant 30 years ago or 20 years ago, the Oz tempering is very, a very expensive process. It involves salt, cooling the parts in salt. It's very toxic, not a good place to work. So we've switched entirely and we're, we're gonna get into that, but it took a lot of the cost out and the, the, the complexity of making these parts we simplified that with, with the material and the robotics. So that was Earth Metal One. Where we're at today in, in 2000, we came up with Earth Metal Two. So the big difference in Earth Metal, there's the process and, and the material, but we're now using a boron alloy. It's a 1030 boron alloy. So we went from that 1085, 85 is the amount of carbon in the steel, to 30. So we reduced the carbon quite a bit. So what are we doing? I mean, what are we doing? Uh, you know, that, that was a, you know, Earth Metal 1 was way ahead of its time, right? Well, how is, how is Earth Metal 2 going to be able to, you know, maintain that, that brand and that uniqueness? And it really is because of the process. We're using a milder steel and getting the, the actual parts harder than the original Earth Metal and more ductile. Does so, it still encapsulate the sulfur? It does. It does, but we do it a different way now. So and you're, you'll see that here coming up. But this ductility is a huge, important advantage that earth metal blades have over the competition. Yes, sir? Uh, it looks like you switched the process the same time you bought the company. We did. How do those go hand in hand? Well, we invested, basically, we, we invested about $10 million to remove all the Oz tempering tanks and all of that to go to our... Um, our system of quenching. So we quench each part as it's being made with water. So that, that was the change. And that's part of the process that we're going to talk about. You know, and new technologies and new things, better steel is the other thing. You know, the, you know this, this 1030, our formula, okay, is it's, it's an automotive grade steel. And 25 years ago, it wasn't really commonly available. Okay, so it is a unique grade of steel also that we couldn't even buy in North America. Initially, Earth Metal II was the uh, steel came from Europe because it wasn't available here. So it's a combination of a couple different things. It's the process and the steel changed. I mean, it, it's interesting. You, you go to our Bolota plant, for example, in Spain, which is probably, you know, you would think would be a very modern facility, but there's, there's guys standing there without any protection with a lathe. There's chips flying up everywhere, you know, it's, you know, the robotics that you saw really are unique to us. And it's part of, it's a really a super important part of the process because it gives us consistency. That's the biggest thing it does for us. But uh, no, the rest, we don't see this in our own plants, we don't see it. You know, because you gotta remember, you look at India, the cost of labor, or China, it's $4 an hour burdened with benefits. You know, we're not going to have that here. We have a union shop where we're working in Canada. So, so who do those other plants supply to? Uh, rest of the world. Or? Rest of the world. We try to do regional manufacturing. The CNH thing? No, okay. no. CN, all the CNH product comes from, from our plant in Hamilton. So we, we actually are talking about sending product to Brazil on the planter side. Uh, we're you know, but they don't want to pay anything. They're, you know, it's, you know, it's, it costs more money to ship the parts. So th those are all ongoing things and projects. We want to expand Earth Metal to other regions in the world, and we're working on it. We've got some good, we've got some people inside we're seeing that want to see that happen also, but it just takes time. 
you know, people are buying from the people that bought for 20 years and, you know, all of those things. So let's get back to the basics a little bit about steel and how is it made? Well, this is how earth metal is made. And yet we put iron ore, we put coke and limestone together and we get these pe pe uh, pellets, iron ore pellets. Well, they get put into what's called a basic oxygen furnace right here. Okay, basic oxygen furnace steel is made the old fashioned way and that's the way all earth metal steel comes. The big distinguishing factor is our competitors don't buy and don't manufacture, don't get the steel made the same way earth metal is made. They use steel that comes from an electric arc furnace. So the big difference between these, these two operations, this uses 95% scrap steel in the process. We don't use scrap steel in earth metal, okay? And there's a reason why we don't. It, it's that one instance of, of some foreign material in a blade that can cause it to crack, can cause it to warp, can cause the edge to be dull, something else. We can't risk it, so we don't do it. And it costs more money for us to buy steel this way than this way. That's why the other guys are using this, this steel. It's cheaper. We don't do it. Um, this is the, the grain structure, and, and, and Elizabeth had a question about the grain structure in between earth metal one and earth metal two, encapsulating the sulfur. This, this grain structure actually is the same between earth metal one and earth metal two. So you can see it's called, it's homogeneous. There's no grain in there. Versus the bottom picture would be hot rolled steel, the stuff that we would manufacture in Spain or, or you know, India for sure, Brazil. Um, to, to see how, I mean, my analogy basically that, that I always use in this presentation is you take a piece of Wonder Bread, everybody knows what Wonder Bread is, right? Spongy bread. You try to rip that Wonder Bread in half, what's going to happen? It's, you're not going to be able to rip it in a straight line, are you? Right? Because there's no grain. There's no grain structure to it. Um, let's say you hit, uh, my analogy for the grain structure would be, what happens sometimes when you hit a nail into a two by four? It's gonna split. So that's your disc blade in a field hitting a rock potentially, okay? That's the analogy. We don't have to worry about that because, because of the way earth metal is made. Okay, little review on the material. Um, the earth metal chemistry, some do's and don'ts. So what makes earth metal steel different is not what's in the steel, but what isn't, right? We just reviewed that. Uh, certain tramp uh, contaminants or elements are controlled or restricted. So this, these, this is r really bad for, heat, for disc blades because you're that farmer, you're laying, you know, you're in your field and it's the, you know, that inner disc on the inner part of the frame and that's the one that cracks, right, inevitably and you are not a happy customer when you gotta go in there and yank that thing out. It's not good. Um, because of our process and what, we're, what we have, we really see uh, next to nothing. Matter of fact, the warranty, the warranty situation on disc blades is almost zero. Um, we, don't, we don't have any issues because of our process. So just a, another little takeaway on the steel part of it. We, we buy from four different mills, um, two in the U.S., two in Canada. Uh, we do it just to play with the dollar. Right now we're buying a lot more steel from Canada than we are from the U.S. because the Canadian dollar is uh, depressed right now significantly. But the, the material is not patented, okay? So the material, we have supply agreements with these steel mills. So it's not like 20 years from now Earth Metal 2 is going to be gone, okay? Because it's, you know, it'll be known. Because of the supply agreements and the non disclosures that are attached to them, they can't disclose our formula. And it really is unique to CNH, all right? It is unique. And this is usually the question when, when, I, when I'm doing this presentation, the dealers will all go, hey, hey, I can go buy Ingersoll over at Nichols, you know? Is that the same stuff? And I can tell you, we use five different steels in our plant, okay? 
Um, earth metal steel is unique, the earth metal steel with the processes. It's the combination of everything. So it is different than what the other guys are selling, okay? And the John Deere steel, for example, is, is scrap. All the, other, all the other brands of steel that we have have scrap included in them. The majority of the product is scrap. So how does that affect a customer? I'll, I'll tell you, give you one John Deere, one of many John Deere examples. We get calls from John Deere dealers on a regular basis. Hey, and if Tony, Tony was just in the, in the room, he just walked out, Tony's the planning manager, he would testify to this. We go to these, these, we go to these shows, we had RDO, which is a big dealer in Western Canada. They tried to buy six truckloads of planter parts from us because the John Deere parts were dulling in the field, right? They couldn't maintain that edge. Well, they couldn't maintain the edge because they didn't have the right steel chemistry and they didn't have the right hardness on the edge. So we have a lot of John Deere customers trying to buy earth metal, just so you know. <laughs> and it, it's amazing how, how they come back and we tr they still try to buy and we don't. Uh, not at the OEM level, they can still buy, they can actually buy earth metal parts through your customer's parts departments. So it's also a way that, that we're using on the parts side of business when I'm talking to parts dealers. Let's say, you know, there's a lot of green planters out there, right, that your customers all have. And, it, you know, maybe you can't get that business today, but maybe tomorrow if you say, you know, you recognize the fact that the guy's having dull, having a dull issue or it's not cutting the residue or whatever when he's driving through the field, you can say, hey, why don't you try, uh, you know, earth metal XP style opener blades. Give it a shot. And we're doing those kind of things with parts groups like Berkey's, for example. I'm going to talk more about Berkey's down the road. They've been a very good partner with us doing this kind of field testing and we're, we're actually trying to get some, some real results, some measurable results that we can take back to the field and give you guys. So it's important. So any questions on the material itself? It is unique, it is different. Now, okay, I, I do want to mention one more thing on the material because you know our competitors will say it's a 1030 boron. It's the same as earth metal. So they're, they're out to your customers, out to the dealers saying that. Well, BS, it is not the same. It might be the same at 1030, but it's like, you know, my analogy for that is like my grandmother's apple pie. You know, she's gone, she's been gone for 20 years, and I have the recipe, it's written down in front of me, but you try to make that apple pie, I can't do it. I mean, I, my kids laugh at me and they go, hey, Dad, you tried again? Yeah, it doesn't taste the same. You know, it was awesome. It's the same thing with earth metal. There's a list of materials down there, but it's the finite elements that are in the material that are not disclosed. We don't disclose them to CNH. We don't disclose them to anybody. It's our, it's our formula. We are tied by contract. We're the exclusive supplier for earth metal CNH. So we are partners on this um, all the way through and through. So it is really a different, unique formula of steel. Any questions on the steel? Yes. Is, is the uh, boron and the, the steel and the process, is that patented? It, it is not. No, the, the video that you actually saw today shows processes and things that we're going to talk about a little later that we don't show anybody in the general public. Because it kind of gives, and we're going to get into a little bit, the differences that make our blade better than our other competitors in North America. So, no, we don't. It, it is, it's not patented, but it's, there's trade secrets and manufacturing secrets that make it different. Uh, one of the things, the other key thing with the automation uh, on making earth metal blades is the way we cool the blades and the way we heat treat them. And um, the automation process, what we do is we take that hot blade and we, we finish stamp it and cool it and heat treat it all at the same time. And that's a unique process also to our factory. All of our other factories, basically they have guys with tongs, right? The blade gets stamped. And imagine you have a 32 inch blade that weighs 90 pounds or 100 pounds, whatever, trying to move that thing over to the cooling belt, right? Where it gets cooled into polymer quench over time. What we've decided to do is with the robotics, 
we can, we can control that process a lot better and use water. And water always makes the hardest parts. Anybody seen, there's a show on TV called Forging with Fire. Yeah, it's kind of a cool show. If you get a, I don't know what channel it's on every once in a while, I catch it. Is it Discovery? But they're, they're doing the same thing we're doing all the time. They're, they're, they're taking material, creating an edge, and then they have to harden it to make sure it lasts. With earth metal, it's the same process, but we don't use oil. We're using water because it gives us a harder, harder, harder edge even than what they're making in that show. Um, so water gives us the best, um, the best and hardest parts, but basically this automation um, is extremely important. Like 2013, we ran 24-7 for eight months straight. Now the month of July is our one month where we shut the plant down, we rebuild all of the robotics uh, in the company. Everything gets rebuilt and we add new stuff and you know. Uh, but when we're working, we can crank this up to 24-7, so please do the best you can. We want to stay busy. You know, sell all the machines you can. We're, we're ready. We can go 24-7. Just give us the orders. Um, but the consistency that robotics gives us gives us this, you know, this improved heat treat performance and the, and the timing to all of this, which we're going to talk about, which makes it important. Okay, here's the first test. See if you guys were watching. Smart. Was everybody, everybody still awake? It's after lunch. So I know it's a challenge. Um, what's in the electric arc furnace seal that CNH Earth Metal doesn't use? 95% scrap. Right. And I used green on purpose for my, for my shot. All right? It is scrap steel. Now, obviously, this is not the scrap steel that they're putting in their, in their blades, right? They're, they're buying select steel. It's just as an example, you know? We gotta have a little fun with John Deere, can't we? I mean, what the hell? But you don't know, right? You don't know from this pile of scrap what's good and what's bad, and neither do they when they get it. They're buying select scrap when they're making their parts, I'm sure, but you don't know. We don't take the chance, we can't take the chance. Okay, um, simultaneous water quench and form. In that process, with the stamping process, there's actually three different steps. The first step is the center hole gets punched, right? The, the blank disc gets loaded into a die. The center hole gets punched, and then the earth metal logo and the part number will get put on the blade. And then it will go to another, another uh, press. It's called the preform press. Uh, and what that press does is it preloads stress onto the blade, okay? So that's an extra step that our competitors don't do on their process. By preloading the stress, what we found is when it gets to the final quench and form, or it actually keeps that tolerance a little tighter. And what we've seen is the edge. It also affects the edge, believe it or not, by preforming that for some reason, it affects the edge of the, of the product. So we're able to maintain that shape and control and we're simultaneously quenching and forming. And for us, this is what it's all about, right? It's quality is what our customers want. And giving them improved field performance is the benefit of all of this. All right, this is kind of the only complicated metallurgical part of the, of the presentation here. And what this is, it kind of shows what happens to earth metal when you heat it up. Or, uh, and what, what, what it is right here, this is temperature and time below on this chart. And when we heat steel up, it goes to 1,750 degrees, whether it's on the, the uh, induction heating or the regular line heating. Um, we heat it up to that, depending on the thickness of the blade. And we have a material called austenite. And what happens when steel cools, it changes, right? So let's say you have that 85-pound or 100-pound blade, right, and you're in Spain or some other part of the world and you got that tong and it drops on the floor, it doesn't get quenched right away, uh, potentially you have something other than what you really want. And that's perlite, bailite, ferrite. So what we have to do every single time is get tempered martensite, which is really earth metal. So we don't want anything over here. So what we have to do is really take that material, right, bring it from 1750, and quench it in under 10 seconds 
uh, to get it to 200, 200 degrees C. So what do we do on average, to give you an idea, when you look at the blades, maybe later you can take a look at, there's a newer blade here, you can kind of see there's a, a check pattern in that. That's from the water quench. So that water gets pushed through that die to cool that blade consistently and heat treat it. So we're taking that blade every single time and bringing it down under 10 seconds. And depending on the blade, like an average 20 inch blade, for example, you, you'll get 250 gallons of water on that part. Boom, through that channel to cool it from that 1750 to 200 C. So this is an important part of this process that because of our robotics and, the, and what, we, what we do every single time, our, our quality is very consistent. That's why you see, you don't see the, the warranty issues. So just a review on the material, it's a 1030 boron. Uh, how hard is this part? It's a 48 to 52. Now what we are seeing, there's some people selling SMA, for example. Anybody here from the left coast? California, no? Okay. Uh, SMA is selling a product from France that they're saying is much harder, but what we're finding out is it's brittle. <laughs> so it, it's, it's great to have a harder part, right? That in, improves the wear and hopefully the longevity of the part, but if it hits a rock and falls apart, really isn't helping things. So I think we have a good mix right now on what we're, what we're doing. Now, the other thing from a steel standpoint, what we are working on right now is Earth Metal 3. So we tested it for three years now. Uh, we're testing it on tillage equipment this year. We tested it on planter blades last year. We're getting 15% better wear. And I'm pushing our factory really to have this to you guys in the next two years. We'll see. I mean, you have to do your testing. CNH has to go through its testing and make sure that it's, you know, it works well. But when this comes out, it's going to be a game changer for Earth Metal again. And the other great thing, because of our partnership, any, any new part, any new process, anything new by contract, you guys get the right of first refusal on it. So you're going to be able to launch it into the market before anybody else. So we're super excited about it. I'm pushing hard. Um, we're testing it on some, uh, we'll test it again this fall on a couple different machines. Uh, we're probably gonna be giving CNH some parts to test this fall um, so they can play around with it a little bit on maybe some Barracudas or some VT waves. So all good stuff. So with uh, the steel in the process, we're able really to give our our tighter tolerances and it really, again, it means improved field performance. That's what we're all about. That's what drives us. So just a quick review. Everybody hopefully understands now what happens to that steel, right? When it gets heated up and cooled down and what we want every time is, to, you know, is that consistency. We get that through the automation. And then, of course, the material is unique to uh, the CNH, it's earth metal, and then together all of this stuff combined, it's earth metal. So some, something just to keep in the back of your mind, if you're traveling, and, and most of the time there's parts people in the room, but these parts catalogs are really excellent. Um, and then the, you go to the first, second page, it kind of gives you, and maybe you're talking to a customer, it gives you the earth metal story on the first two or three blade, or two or three pages of the tillage book and the planting and seeding book. So if you don't have one of these, make sure you get one. It's a nice handy guide when you're talking product to customers. You can say, hey, yeah, let's talk about earth metal. It kind of gives you a little guideline on how to proceed. The other thing we are working on is online training when, if, if I ever get time to do it. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have online training for the parts group because that's where it starts. A lot of the, you know, there's a lot of turnover in the parts areas. So getting the earth metal story out is critically important, but you guys have access to this all the time through these books. So everybody understand earth metal right now from a process standpoint. Let's talk about what we're doing. And you saw some of this in the video. I'm not gonna play it. There's a, like a little embedded video showing this, but what we do on every heat lot, it's the giant ladle of steel. 
we do these ball tests. And what it is is we take you know sample blades out of the out of the the heat the heat lot, and we put drill a half inch hole and push a one inch ball through it, and then we analyze this fracture. And we can tell if we have a good if we have good steel and good process if this doesn't splinter out. So when we do this with competitor blades, they splinter out. And you might, when you go to dealerships, parts counters, you might see these blades, these half blades laying around. Or even if you want one, if you want one to use for your own use, just let me know. I'll send you one. It's no charge. You can, it helps you talk about the story. Uh, but the dealerships use it to talk about, hey, the, the earth metal blades are bulletproof, quote unquote, you know, because that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so, but it really, it really helps and, and it helps understand the ductility, right? Because it's not cracking out. So, and, uh, you know, and, and we know how it's heat treated. The other test we do is this wobble test. And I'm going to show this one. So that's a hardened steel blade being deformed like that. How much pressure is that? It's a hydraulic press, so it's a lot of pressure to get. I mean, the hydraulic cylinder on that thing is probably that big around. You know, it's a pretty hefty cylinder. Yeah, yeah, and really, I mean, what the ductility, what that is showing you is ductility, right? The, the ability for the blade to go through the ground and flex, whether you're hitting rocks or hitting curbs or whatever you're hitting, right, and, and withstand that force. Now, the big example that we use, we were, we, there was one product in your portfolio three or four years ago that was not earth metal, and that was the 330 turbo till blades, okay? Um, you guys were having some, some product quality issues with that product. So we did a test, we, we kind of convinced everybody in engineering here to try the RVT wave blade, put it on. So they put it on, uh, I don't remember what size machine, but it was basically half our blades and half the turbo till blades and ran them in North Dakota or South Dakota, 2,500 acres to do a test. And the good news for us is we had zero failures on that test, the competitor, our competitor, the turbo till manufacturer had 13 failed blades. So that was kind of the convincing factor to CNH to make that switch back to us. So right now, any disc blade, all the sweeps um, that are, are being sold are coming from our factory and they're earth metal now. So, so we, we do see it, we, we hear the testing. When I was here last week, we had a test engineer, right, I even that, I forgot his name, but he's like, oh yeah, I see it all the time, we test, uh, the other guys out of Iowa, and there's a huge difference in wear. You know, it's because of the process and everything else that you're seeing, the ductility, all of those things. But, you know, and this is huge. If you look at our typical five millimeter blade, 800 cycles, um, six and a half mil, 600 cycles. Well, our, our competitor in North America, their, their blades were failing at 125. So, you know, you do the math, 125 divided by 800 into it, it's a pretty big difference in ductility. So that's another advantage. It's great to have a sharp part, a hard part, but it's got to be able to last, right? I mean, it has to be a good mixture of all of those things. This is, you know, and, and the title of this blade is important. You know, when I'm with parts guys, I kind of push this. It's like cheap life insurance, right? <coughs> When your customer's coming in buying a part, you know, I mean, you can 15% better wear, you know, yeah, it's maybe $5 more than the cheap stuff, but look what you're not going to see. You know, you're not going to see, this is a ball test that went way wrong. This is what happens when things are not heat treated correctly. Um, what are we doing to improve? This is another kind of unique process is the way we put the edge on the parts, okay? We use a horizontal mill. Everybody else, including our other factories, are using vertical mills. So they put, they have the vertical mill, they slap the blade on it, 
and they cut one edge at a time. Well, with our horizontal mill and our technology, we're able to actually cut both edges of the blade at the same time. So what, what that allows us to, what the benefit to the customers really is, that edge is maintained better. It's part of that, you know, it's the stress or whatever we're doing by cutting both pieces at the same time, both edges. Uh, it allows that blade to stay sharper longer with the heat treat. So has anybody here moved a super sharp blade? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know how sharp they are. That's another unique CNH feature. Those blades are super, you can get, most of all the replacement parts that we're selling now have that super sharp edge. So you're getting that razor sharp edge on all of those parts. And that all comes from, from this, from this uh, horizontal milling machine. Uh, what are we doing? I mean, we talked about Earth Metal 3 a little bit. Um, we were the pioneer for boron steel in North America. Um, I think the other thing that you're going to see more of in the future from us uh, are going to be maybe using thinner blades. Okay, where in the past you might have to have that true quarter inch, but if you don't need that quarter inch blade, why put it in the ground, right? What's the advantage? There isn't an advantage. It creates more compaction. It's, you know, more weight. The other thing that it does is it, it um, harder to get into the ground in dry conditions, you know, so there's, you know, with, with our technology and the way the blades are made, we have more options. The reason, you know, the six and a half mil, the reason the turbo till went to six and a half mil was they had to keep it that thick to keep the blade together. That's why it was that thick. So I think you're going to see other, you know, as we change the earth metal, you know, to we go to our next version and even you know, with current product, we can, we can skinny with the blade a little bit, pull a little cost out, and actually give you better field performance. So look for all of those things from us. The big thing here, and I think I just covered it really was what I just said, is this thinner blades on here. I think, and, and I even talked about educating newer tillage components, and that's what you guys are here for. You know, I mean, it's really understanding, being able to talk to the customers, from, especially from a parts department when I do this for parts, the, the farmers are coming in, they're coming to their, your dealerships for a reason, right? Because you're the experts. So the more knowledge you can give them versus them trying to figure out what they need from Shoop or somebody else, right, is, is the, the advantage. Customers will pay more for that. You know, they will and they do. They come back to the dealerships for a reason because you guys are educated on what's going on. You think Shoop is getting trained? No. Nichols, no, they don't do that. They send out and sell their product on price. That's it. Uh, I put this in there. We, we do offer, a, um, we have a, a disc sharpener available. We are going to modify this for the Barracuda blade also. So you're going to be able to sharpen the Barracudas. It's going to be kind of a notched blade right here. Um, depending upon what we have, we're testing it. Chris has to test it when we get it finished here. We're gonna send him a copy probably next week. So we have this for concave blades. So if you have, a, you know, versus the Robo sharpener, this is mounted below, basically on a little stand. It, it's a cold sharpening device. So it doesn't, you don't lose the heat treat in the part by sharpening it. That's the other thing you have to worry about. Uh, you don't do that with our design. From a part standpoint, this is what we're currently offering you right now. Uh, the concaves, the openers, the riveted assemblies, the coulters, and the sweeps. And, and Ivan was talking about this before, crimp center. This is an important legacy part for you guys. You need to make sure you understand why it's important, especially when you're, you've got the accelerator blade down there and you've got these other people trying to promote their blades when, when really the crimp center is started all of those things. This was the you know, 40 years ago or 35 years ago, this was a game changer because what CNH did was they came up with this crimp and it does a couple different things. You know, the biggest thing is it adds strength, right? Because the, the CNH blades are shallower concavity blades, so there's less dish in the blade. And when you have less dish in a blade, right, you got to have something to keep the blade together when it hits rocks. And that's what this crimp does, along with bolting up. Uh, the way Ivan discussed earlier, it pulls a little easier because of the concavity. So there's some other benefits. The big thing is strength. That's the big thing. 
um, from a from a product standpoint, from a uh, agronomic standpoint, it would be the, the the back pressure, right? When you have less concavity, this would be the example would be like a sunflower or a Landall disc versus an International Harvester or CNH design, less compaction, right? Less pressure because of that angle. Um, the other thing you see with earth metal blades versus the competitor's blades, just a little aftermarket. Um, we see it with all the exports. They bring in six millimeter parts, okay? Our parts are six and a half. Six and a half is true quarter inch, okay? Our competitors bring in six millimeter blades. The other thing, let's say, for example, on a 28 inch blade, as picking a size, instead of 28 inch, you get 28 and a half inch blade, 26 and a half, 24 and a half. So the blades are actually bigger and stand than standard blades from the aftermarket world. So yeah, the product is more money, but it's a bigger, thicker blade, it's gonna last longer, all of those good attributes that farmers want. Okay, uh, real briefly, I wanna talk about uh, the, the two. We kinda of mentioned the VT Wave and the, you've kinda of got the backstory on that. And, and I know Ivan's gonna talk more about all of this stuff when he gets to the vertical tillage section, but from a design standpoint, what, there's you know a couple different designs that, that we have. This fluted, this curved flute, really helps move the soil. That's what that's designed to do. And if you look at the 335 VT in the field, uh, and, and because the con, I'm not saying this just because the Conskildi guys are in the room, it's very close between the Conskildi vertical tillage machine and the 330. Uh, they both are excellent in the field, but. I still think the 330, 335 VT runs better from a field demonstration standpoint. So if you guys get a chance to go to the farm show and you're able to see some of those demos, anybody do that or not? It's, to me, it's fun. I like to go and then I talk to the farmers because they know a hell of a lot more than I do about what's going on and I hear what they have to say. But uh, so that VT is moving a lot more soil. So you've got to be able to cover that, that higher residue. And the concavity on that, on that blade is about three quarters of an inch, okay? You get to the Barracuda, the big difference is you have the serrated blade now. So you've got the more aggressive style blade, and then you have an inch and a quarter of concavity on that blade. So what's the difference? When you increase the concavity on the blade, what's the effect? What's, what's, what's going to happen in the field when you do that? It's going to displace more dirt. It's going to cover that residue. Um, you're going to get that nice blackened finish that some farmers want. Depends where you are, right, Ivan? I mean, one guy wants it, another guy doesn't want it. They so, yeah, they do. Yeah, and um, this blade, this this picture, I don't, I don't have a lot of pictures. I think Ivan will probably cover more of this. This is from uh, we did a lot of our testing in Grundy Center, Iowa. So it was a 20,000 acre farm. We tested for two and a half years, spring and fall. So this blade, these blades have about 2,000 acres on them right now with this, with this shot. And you kind of see where the parts are shiny. You see that in these pictures all the way around? That kind of shows where the part is wearing, okay? And the, the cool thing about the Barracuda is you see where it's not shiny. Where is it not shiny? It's in the valleys of those, of those uh, ripples, right? And what that, what that really allows and what we've seen in all the longer life testing that we've done, this center part is staying sharper longer. So it's always able to grab that residue, right? Pull it in and cut it. That's what the Barracuda is designed to do. So you've got the heavy residue. Uh, the Barracuda is an excellent choice. Um, the other thing that was just launched last week, we have the Barracuda available for kits. So if you have a 330 or a 335 that a customer is looking to, or a dealership, you've got a dealer, you're at a dealer and he's got six 330s sitting there and he's wondering why he can't sell them. Well, tell him, hey, go buy a kit. And the parts department is, has been very aggressive in the way they're pricing these kits. So there, it's not the usual 300% markup. It's only 150%, right, Dick? Whatever. It, <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
I'm joking about the numbers. I don't know what the numbers are, but the, it's, it's priced much more aggressively, I guess, than other parts of what I've been told. So take advantage of that. Uh, four years of developing and testing. We tested probably six different edge designs. So what it's, uh, the edge that we came up with on the, on the Barracuda is a number one A. So it's the standard edge that's on most of your discs. We tried the razor edge blades. We tried all of the other different combinations. But in this design, this blade with that edge lasted longer. And believe it, the 1A is probably the most expensive um, edge that you can put on because it's a compound edge. So it's more machining time for us. Uh, serrated blade maintains its life. And here, this is the other important thing. It's a patented design for CNH, right? It's that goes back to that whole contract thing that I talked about. You guys get the right of the first, first refusal. You decided to take this product and market it. Some products you haven't, you know, but this product you did and we're thankful you did. I think it's a good, a good product. It's a good fit for what you already have. Uh, this is Grundy Center, Iowa. Um, this farmer, and I just put it up there, and, I, and Ivan is going to talk more about the application speeds and depths and everything else. This is just what this guy did, okay? He, in the fall, what he thought worked the best, he would go in at four inches, and this is a fall shot. It actually was snowing the, the afternoon of this shot, so it was, you know, right at the end of November, middle of Iowa. Um, frost is coming in snow. And you can see how that, what that picture looks like. It's well mixed. You know, he was very impressed. The, the farmers around him all wanted to buy the machine. I mean, it was, it was a, a very impressive demo. Then what he did, he went back at spring at two inches. And, he, and, and, the, and his customers, from his experience, it warmed the soil up, dried things out, and he liked that benefit. So you have lots of different options that Ivan's gonna talk about that can do that same thing. That's what this guy did. And because we're in Canada, we do a lot of testing. Uh, actually, the guy that tested the, tested the Barracudas also tested the Krauss accelerators and other parts. And he said the Barracuda was the best machine, the best blade that he's ever tested. So to us, that was a pretty good recommendation. And that's in Listowell. This is the guy in Grundy Center. Um, and then we did some testing in Kansas. Any questions on the Barracuda? We're super excited about it. So hopefully you guys can get them out and demo them. Berkey's is, uh, I think, right now, I think they have an order for 10 kits. So we've been going, I've been working a lot with Berkey's over the last year and a half. So they're going to sell a bunch of these. Uh, they're in the perfect market for it. Uh, the other thing we offer, we offer earth metal coulters, uh, and those parts are all made on that line seven that we showed you earlier with the induction heating. So we have a full range and, and it covers different parts. Um, from a sweep standpoint, I'm going to touch on the sweeps a little bit. Uh, the process, uh, the process that we talked about, that manual process, the one thing that was really unique, and it was unique to International Harvester when this tooling came out, whatever, 50 years ago, that process, that one stamp where that press comes down, and it forms the stem right here, forms the angle and trims all of this. At one time, 30 or 40 years ago, that was a patented process. That, that tooling was patented. Um, so what happened 20 years later? <laughs> you know, tooling expired, Nichols copied it, and everybody else. But the big thing that we see, and you'll see it in, the, in a couple photos here in a minute, this plated edge is extremely important along with this extended nose with a half inch wear point. It gives us a real advantage. And what we see in the field, you know, in the Dakotas and where they're doing a lot of field cultivating, 15 to 20% improvement in life over competitors' parts, over Nichols, over Kelly, what John Deere is selling. Um, big advantage. So we have different, we have the maxi width. Basically, it's a little wider design, shorter nose, with all of the same, from a steel standpoint, all of the same uh, benefits that we talked about in earth metal. So it has the longer wear, it has the ductility, all of the advantages that we talked about on discs 
apply to sweeps. So you really do have a huge advantage in the sweep market versus the competition. Huge. And our sales show it. I mean, we year over year, just to give you an idea, we had an 18% improvement in sweep sales in a down market. And that was all in the parts department. So, you know, mostly parts and some of the new uh, field cultivator launch. So we, we have a really nice sweep. Well, it's well designed. Take advantage of it. Make sure people understand that. We have uh, also the heavy duty adapters. And one part, one of the reasons why the sales were up 18% was there was a rebate going on on these where the customers could go back to the dealership, right, and basically get this part for free. And we did it for an, another reason, basically to get those John Deere guys, you know, especially John Deere. You know, the John Deere field cultivators, the Kelly sweeps are made in Mexico. Not that there's anything wrong with Mexico, but the steel was a 1085 steel and they don't last, they, they burn out like you wouldn't believe. So the parts departments were going after the John Deere people with field cultivators. That's a big reason why we saw a big jump in sweep sales. And then we have the maxi point, and this is, what do you guys see, the maxi point or the maxi width? Is there, what are people going with in your markets? A little bit of both. We're seeing more max, we're seeing more of the maxi points, I think, in this area. Um, I think the farther north you go, there's more maxi widths, but it, it really depends. And the competitor, I mean, the nickels, the, the, you might hear the word ultra wing. That's nickels copy of this, okay? We also offer the chisel plow, and that's a different angle, different shank, a lot of different things there, but uh, we have all of those. Here's a kind of a wear shot. This is, I think, 300 acres, so it's not a huge length of time. But you can see the plated edge is still very clearly visible, right, on the, on the sweep. You can see the extended nose is very clearly visible. You don't see the shiny, shininess of the part either um, versus the other one. So there's less wear on this. You're, you see a little wear on the stem. Look at the Shoop, which is an Osmondson part, also maker of the turbo till. You can see how that nose is thinning right here. The blade width is thinning, and, and the, whole, the whole product is shrinking. The John Deere actually does a little better than this, I think. The point is still there, but the plate, their edge is gone because they don't use that plated, plated stamped, forged edge that we do. Uh, this, unfortunately, I can't show you this. Um, so if you, I think it's all in your book. Is it in your book from a recall standpoint, this slide? I would invite, it's not. Um, I, I would ask you to go to Berkey's Facebook page. To me, it's this, the Berkey's has done a really good job on social media showing um, product comparisons. So you, you don't have to search this, but if you go to the Berkey's Facebook page, you'll see it. They did a comparison, the parts manager did a comparison with somebody, basically had a customer that came in and said, uh, my sweeps are better than earth metal. And the parts manager said, here, why don't you try these? So they did the, the trial test, came back, and the whole nose of the nickels sweep is gone. So there's, it's not even close from a wear standpoint. So I'm spending a lot of time training parts people, doing this presentation for them. I'm asking all those parts people to do those testimonials and to try and put more of this stuff on Facebook. Because customers are educated, they're going there in looking for this stuff. So we have a really good story. We just have to do a better job promoting it and talking about it. We haven't done that. Um, that's why we're doing these classes, so. Um, real quickly, I talk about parts. And I do this on purpose with whole goods salespeople and of course parts people, but it's super important for the dealers to buy on the programs, right? If they don't buy parts on the programs, they are not competitive. Right? So they wonder why those customers, why they're losing sales. They, want the, they need the customers to come back to their dealerships to look at new products, right? to talk to the product experts, all of those things. So they have to retain the parts business. So we have programs that do that. You know, the biggest one is a direct ship program. So we have 300 parts. The orders uh, are coming in from the dealers, and we ship from our facility or other depots. All of these parts, really everything is available for the programs. 
Um, this is kind of a list of what we're doing now. We have a spring program and we have a fall program. We have direct ship fill-in programs. So really, every other month, there is a program for a dealer to get an 8% minimum discount on their parts. And it, all it takes is basically a bolt and a half of discs or a box of sweeps to take advantage of it. So when you're talking to those dealers out there, make sure they understand there's great programs, they have to take advantage of them. And to give you an idea, out of how many dealer outlets do we have, like 2,400, North America, something like that, we have about 150 dealers taking advantage of this program. So we've hired, we just hired one more guy. His sole purpose in life is getting dealers to buy on these programs, right? To make sure they take advantage of it and buy the OEM parts. Because there's a lot of CNH dealers that are not loyal to earth metal. And they, a lot of it, they don't know. I was in California two weeks ago. I trained these guys two years ago, right? The whole parts, it was booth equipment, big dealership in Southern California. Uh, all the parts people were all new. They didn't know, they didn't even know what earth metal was. They didn't know what Crim Center was. They had the SMA guy was there calling on them going, here, here, there's this part from France and it's $10 less, go sell these. That's what they did, you know? So it's educating the customers making sure they take advantage of these programs. It's critically important. And that's all I have. I know it was a lot to digest.